at this point we've kind of assumed that you've seen something about what we're talking about the early effect and the initial discussion of what drain induced barrel lowering might be and kind of curious okay what's really going on what's the details a little bit and so I want to get into a little further of the of, of the conversation here now one of the things that we have when you increase the drain voltage on a typical MOSFET like this okay so the drain voltage will increase it will definitely it will definitely increase the depletion region this is what we're used to thinking about the depletion region will go from here if this increased to something here and it wouldn't surprise you that the depletion region increased it wouldn't surprise you that the length of the channel the effective channel length would decrease and as a result since we know that from the original um, solution in the physics that the channel length actually has a huge impact um, you know because it's you basically take the, the source and the drain charge divided by the channel length. And this is kind of what gives you the current. Well, that is one of these parameters. So you could imagine there is some effect as a result. But what you find is it not only affects that, which is very relevant, and for fairly far above threshold currents, that is the dominant effect. But when you actually are talking about a subthreshold and near threshold currents, what you see is something a little different or at least not different, but actually more a much stronger effect, which is the same thing that changes the channel, changes the barrier, not only changes from here to here, changes it inside, but it actually changes the electrostatic potential all the way through the curve. So by pulling this, going from here to here, that pulls this down, it actually changes this potential. Psi is not quite as high as it was, and it changes the potential here in the source to channel region. Now, you might look at this and wonder, well, what happened? And that's actually a really good question. Um, and what you're getting here is you want to zoom in further, and what you see is this whole region of the, of the drain induced barrier lowering. Let's zoom into what the source side looks like over here. And on those two cases, the black and the blue case here, if I were to increase it, it actually decreases the structure. There's actually a slight slope on the channel, very slight, but enough that it actually has an effect. And by pulling this down, it actually will pull this potential down. And it does work out very, works out exactly as you would expect. And it turns out mathematically, that gives you structure here. It also gives very good foundation for saying, why is my current a saturation current times an E to some sigma BD over UT? Because it really is a change in the surface potential. And it really is a change in what the gate function would be affecting you. Now, an interesting example of this, within because in a normal FET, you don't ever see very much change. So you could go either way, right? And so, you know, you, you could make a guess on it. But one thing I like is I, we took, for example, a very small FET in a particular process. It was an older process. And actually made the device smaller than the minimum channel length. You can do this, and you have to be careful of what you're doing, what you're expecting, but it can work. And this was actually looking at what my drain current versus drain voltage was for this device. Normally I would see a minimum channel length device would have had an early voltage of about 5 volts, 8 volts in this process. <clears throat> what was interesting here is that when I now look at this for different gate voltages, this is log scale and current, I actually see very nice linear slopes. In fact, strangely enough, it actually fits extremely well, almost better than the nonlinearities you see over here. And there's a number of reasons for that, but it begins to give some very good credibility that what you expect to see is an exponential dependence. And it's, in fact, what you see across there. So even when I have a larger device, I'm still going to go with this exponential version of it. And what you'll see as well when we get into circuit concepts is that it has some actually very profound approaches and it has some nice simplifying features to it um, that are both very useful from a mathematical sense but physically correct as well and so both of these things are very very powerful